Hello everyone and welcome to DWorks. So today I would like to give you a brief understanding about Lumion settings and why you should not be paying for them. Honestly, people are not inventing settings. They're just discovering them before you. So spend some time, follow along this video to know why as every project is different and unique in its own way. For those of you who are new to this channel, please do like, subscribe and share my videos if you like my content. And to all my subscribers, I love you and thank you for showing me all the love. Thank you. So, I'm going to sh just show you how I took a simple model and put it in Lumion and got this uh, render done so at first I modeled a house uh, on, in SketchUp of course and I made use of the the uh, sandbox tool and yeah so I created a grid pushed and pulled it so basically if you if I go into that double click in that and you can do you can do this on your own as well again set the radius to Somewhere there, you can I push, pull, do what you want. It's completely up to you actually. You can do what you want with the sandbox tool. It's a very useful tool in SketchUp. So I did that, created my model, exported it to, uh, saved it as a 2020 SketchUp file and went straight to Lumion. So now that I had my contours down, all I did was I added in a few Lumion materials. For example, I've got a rusted metal over here that's already in the Lumion library so I never used anything from outside no, nothing no no new materials or something that's already in the Lumion library that's what I did so and I added a smoke effect over here you, you can get the effects I'll cover that in another video if required from the FX tab so you've got a lot of effects over here smoke fire and everything if you have volumetric fire and everything so I just added that on top of that and yeah added put a car put a, put a Jeep over there and painted the entire scene with these Lumion library materials like these wood, dead trees, dead trunks and things like that, some wild things, a few rocks, painted a different type of landscape at certain areas and yeah then it was done. The model was basically done and added a few detailed trees nearby the camera view. So now if I go into photo, if I click on that, so that was the final view that I created yeah so that's the final view that I created so I'm just gonna go to another view where I do not have my settings on so this is without the settings I've set my camera up for so if you look on the left hand side it says custom style click on that and you've got realistic interior daytime this that color sketch watercolor so depending on the project you'll select so I wanted a realistic output so I selected the realistic style so make use of the Lumion presets. If you're a beginner or even an intermediate and you do not have enough time for your custom styles, do not just directly in the beginning itself go into advanced, try setting up your own scenes. It's a very good habit to experiment, but when you have projects, you know, you have a proper deadline, you cannot just set up your own. So just use the preset given by Lumion. So just click on realistic and you should have a good output ready for you already all you need is to just tweak a few things in order to achieve that proper realism so yeah as you can see the you cannot exactly see the reflection on the glass plane what can you do with that so just go into reflection edit reflection plane and just add one reflection plane once that's added click on ok Make sure your speed ray of reflections on and you should and the moment you click on high I, I've, I've just set that to low because of my graphics card. I mean it takes up a lot of graphics card power So yeah, it should be good to go in your final render. It should look good. See it already Looks good just by doing nothing yet. So So, so the next thing you want to edit is the color correction The temperature might be too high. So I always use a neutral temperature 
and I go into Photoshop and I tweak the temperature and tint if required. So if you bring that down to zero, so you already have that. You're already getting that realistic look. So yeah, there's every project is different, so you can again you can go into real skies, tweak that. I probably How about I leave it there? What happens there? There you go. Yeah, so that's it for the real skies. You can sharpen your picture, you can do that in Photoshop. That's up to you, but I generally don't use the VR. And you've got the hyperlight. Make use of the hyperlight. It basically is the secondary bounce of lights. So set that to somewhere. Just just give it a little bit of hyperlight. The skylight effect, if you find your render going too saturated with the skylight, that bluish light, you can turn that saturation down, increase the brightness if you require more skylight brightness. Skylight in planar reflections. Skylight, so whatever planes you've added, there'll be a skylight on that, so I do not generally use that. And skylight in projected reflections, switch that on, keep that on ultra or keep that on high. High is actually good enough for realistic renders. You can switch that to ultra if required. So that's the that's a simple settings shadow effect. This is the shadow brightness. How you how dark do you want your scene to look like, or how much of shadow brightness do you want to add? Changing the sun shadow range again softens your uh, shadows out. Omni shadow is the corner shadows every edge shadows that you get so you can set that to high depending again on your scene what value you require I'll keep that for this particular scene I'll keep that there I'll increase the only shadow for this particular scene interior and exterior is the difference in darkness and brightness compared to the interior and exterior you can see the difference there yeah so I'm just gonna turn that I'm just gonna keep that there Coloring, turn the coloring bit down. It basically affects the color colors of your shadows. So turn that down. I can give it a slight coloring. So if you if you click on your preview, you see the changes already. Yeah, so it's almost set to be honest. So make use of these realistic settings. There's no point asking someone else for their settings file. You have sorry. You have your own approach towards your projects so now another thing you can add to that adds to the realism is go to camera you can add the what do you say what do you say chromatic aberrations chromatic aberrations is basically also known as color fringing or purple fringing is a common optical problem that occurs when a lens is either unable to bring all wavelengths of color to the same focal plane so basically if it's a common realistic problem so add this problem to your renders because it's a common problem in the realistic world. So add that to your renders. Add a little bit of dispersion to your renders. And the affected area, let the affected area be that much or you can reduce the amount of affected area in your renders. So add chromatic aberrations to in order to achieve these realistic renders. Then the next one is the depth of field. Make sure you have the depth of field. How do you set up the depth of field? So you, all you go is to edit and I want the building in focus over here. So, yeah, so click over there, click on the tick, set the amount of the value for the depth of field. Yeah, I, I'm quite happy over there. Set foreground and background, so yeah, I'm happy there. So everything else is basically out of focus except the building. A slightly out of focus, not completely. So that's again up to your taste so add depth of field go to effects again add a two-point perspective which basically straightens out your camera view all your, your camera line is in line with your model file so that's the two-point perspective again go back to effects if you want to add lens flare if you have your sunlight behind you depending on the project again you can add lens flare it gives this glaring thing your camera add a handle camera 
you can add fill mage if required set of course set the focal length yeah there's all sorts of things you can do you can add the age you can make it look you know you can you need to you know in order to achieve realism you have to make use of weathering you have to make use of uh, things in order to you have to make use of particular textures or materials or whatever it is in order to make it look not perfect because nothing is perfect in the real world so yeah so make break things I mean do not add perfect materials the real world does not have perfect corners 90 degree corners so remember that add curves to your corners add random objects to your scene fill up your scene because this is a forest anyway it doesn't matter what you add everything is perfect in a forest so there's nothing like no you cannot add a rock over here you can add a rock over there that's up to you so everyone has different taste everyone has their different style for their renders yeah so you can add that go to effects again go to artistic and another option that you can use the analog color lab analog color lab is basically changes the feel of your render and the color shades so it immediately changes what your render looks like so if you leave that one for now and there are different styles to your render so yeah see every every time i slide that the style of my render changes so depending on the style that i need i can set up my render if that's too much if the amount is too much you can you can obviously turn that down to 0.4 let's keep that at 0.4 yes yeah. see yeah. not bad isn't it so make use of these settings then you've got other you've got these other options bloom that makes your lighting glow make use of these settings there are there are a lot of settings that's already in built lumion no other artists are building their own settings up so they are actually featuring around these settings that Lumion has provided us with so we are going after these settings we are tweaking them in order to add the realism we are not coding settings into Lumion remember that we are not coming up with new type of settings or anything is everything is inside the photo effects or the animation effects so it's completely up to you what settings is perfect for your particular project I can already render this out, take it to Photoshop with a little bit of tweaking, make it, make it even more realistic. So yeah, in order to achieve realism, you do not need someone else's settings for your Lumion file because your Lumion file is different and there's nothing unique about my file or nothing unique about your file because it's just rotating around these effects Lumion has added. And of course the post-production, which if you're good at Photoshop, then good. You can add, you can do a lot of stuff in Photoshop. You can add realistic grass in Photoshop if required people are who are really good with post-production can do that because the post-production eventually matters for your still renders and after a few tweaking of my renders what I generally do is before rendering if you go to render photos you've got these maps additional outputs for your post-production so make use of reflection map make use of lighting map give them a try what they are make use of the normal map or make use of the depth map so use them tweak them on photoshop and find out what they are if not yeah of course i'll do another video on these additional maps or additional outputs but yeah give it a try with different angles change your sunlight change rotate your sun and see add clouds add fog see you've got fog over here in the weather yeah you've got fog over there so if what happens if i add fog to my does it look good I don't think it looks good over here it clearly doesn't look good in this render over here so there's no point if you want if I have to add fog over here I'll have to add a bit of precipitation or snow over here I can increase this extra fog addition and create if, if, if I have to create that snow effect yeah and turn down my where's my real skies and turn on the maybe turn on the brightness a little bit see the real skies 
or even change the rail skies to overcast. You've got so many options here. In order to create a yeah, this is so play around with the options. You've got hundreds of options over here, and you've got these effects all right in front of your eyes, especially in Lumion 11 or Lumion 11 Pro users. Then you've got animated phasing. Those of you who are interested in anima animated phasing, you can go ahead with that. But I'm just talking about still renders for now. So yeah, you've got many things, many advanced settings over here. Make use of them. You've got global illumination if you are suffering with low light. Increase your spotlight, GIs. Make use of hyperlight, the secondary bounces. Make use of skylight if you're if you cannot light up your interior scenes properly. So yeah, so make use of all these features. There's nothing extra that other CG artists add. They just tweak, they just bend the rules, they add plain lights in their uh, professional renders to make things look like the real world. That is it actually. So there's nothing much. So go go over these settings and make make use of the settings already provided by Lumion if you're doing a realistic render exterior render make use of this if you're doing an interior render make use of the interior settings because it's already set up and everything's done by them for you all you have to do is tweak the values that's how I actually made this render can be better if you used analog color lab you can get a different effect if I think I used yeah I used analog color lab for this one just to show everyone that how it affects the feel sorry of a render so it this, is, this has a different feel and this again is with another greenish tint and with the help of analog color lab that achieved this spend some time with lumion if you want to learn it properly spend some time with your modeling and never pay for settings again Thank you all for watching this video. If you did enjoy the video then please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated with my future uploads.